Hi, I'm Dave Dinkle. I get a call from two types of investors, brand new ones, haven't done a deal yet, and looking to get transactional funding in place. Experienced investors who already have a closing agent and oftentimes call me and say, Dave, can you do a transactional funding? It's an A to B and B to C, so on and so forth, qualifies. And I say, sure, you know, when is it going to close? And they say, well, today at 12 o'clock. Well, that's not impossible. I do those on a regular basis, but, but things have to fall in place, obviously. I have to see the A to B and B to C and I have to check out the closing firm and various things. The other investors who have not done it before, when they say, who would you recommend? In many cases, I can recommend a local closing agent, but not all the time. And what I decided to do, especially in the last two days, something really got me going. In one case, I waited two weeks to do a transactional funding, and I got back a very strange note from the attorney, as well as the closing person and the pre-closer that said, basically, you're not on the A to B or B to C contracts, therefore you're not a part of the closing, and we cannot allow you to see the A to B or B to C. You have to get that from the seller and from the end buyer. And, oh, by the way, we can't pay you out because you're not on either of the contracts. That's just absurd. 7,000 closings later, 45 years in the business, and no one has ever said that to me. That just doesn't make sense at all. So what I've done is I've put together a hall of fame and a wall of shame. And what I'm going to start doing is putting the closing agents that I work with on a regular basis on that. Now, when I say on a regular basis, I may have only done one closing with them. I may have done 30 closings with them. And I'm not discriminating as this is the best guy in town or something like that. I'm just putting them out there so you know who you can go to and comfortably know what's going to happen to you. Uh, on the other side, uh, on the wall of shame, I'm going to put up the people like, I didn't mention the second one yet, but on the second one what happened is clearly on the closing Alta statement, which is like a HUD statement, it's like a CD, just a different format, I was showed being paid back. I called up and I said, is it going to disperse? And they checked and said, yes, it's going to disperse this afternoon. You'll be wired your funds. They checked my wire instructions and uh, nothing happened. So I called back and I got an email actually from the investor and he said, oh, they made a mistake. They sent me the funds. Well, normally you know, you'd say to yourself, well, okay, forward them to me. But the rest of the email went on to say, I've already spent the money. Now, you know, you get a wire in the day, during the day sometime, and you spend it before the afternoon is over. You know, I sent an email back to the closing agent and I said, I don't know if I've been defrauded here or there's something going on, but I'm going to have to make a title claim or move forward with a lawsuit if I don't get my money back. No answer whatsoever. I can understand the mistake where they weren't careful enough to check, but I can't understand answering an email back and saying, we're sorry, we made a mistake and we'll work to rectify it. And, of course, the investor is, you know, I've got a closing coming up next week. We'll see what happens. As has happened to me before where, you know, the closing agent made a mistake and it uh, was very expensive for the closing agent, ultimately. Had to sue also for the title company, which I made a title claim on and so on and so forth. What I'm saying to you is, especially with investors that uh, rush to an unknown closing agent, you have to ask them the question, do you do A to B and B to C double closings on the same day? Now, if they know what they're doing and they've done them before, the answer is yes. If you're thinking that you're going to use the N buyer C funds to close the, with the A to effectively do an A to C, you better ask that question because that's what most of the calls come through. I thought I could do this. I got to the closing agent, they said it wasn't legal. And in most states, it's not. And it's not legal with their title companies. Unfortunately, they've disclosed to me in many, many times that they run a software program that if they're audited, you can't really tell where the balance is, when it came in, and so on and so forth. Now, why would they do that? Why would they break the law as well as the guidelines that the title insurer has? Simply to get business from investors. They don't make as much money because they're only doing one closing. 
but either the, they're in trouble or they just don't care. And ultimately what happens is you can come up with a problem on the end. I'm going to say this right now on, on this gig here. I got a call, I got an email actually, and it said on an upcoming transactional funding I'm doing, the closing agent is charging me for title insurance on the A to B leg and on the B to C leg. Most title companies cannot do a closing without issuing a title policy. You know, how can you get around that? You can get a quit claim deed, just file it in the public record. But what most people don't understand is the importance of title insurance. And I relate back to this YouTube video I saw a long time ago. I had to laugh. And the guy's holding up a check for a god-awful amount of money. And he says, you know, look, I told you guys never to get title insurance. And I never did it myself. But here's what can happen. I got this giant loss that came back to bite me from the buyer that I sold it to. Had I had title insurance, I would have had no claim. I would have gone to the title company and gotten it. So why do you get title insurance? Well, it's worthless until you need it, and then it can be worth an awful lot of money. Because if you think, well, I'll just sue somebody, you are not in the realm of reality in terms of what attorney's fees can cost, and you may lose. The best strategy, so to speak, if you're an investor going to do a closing with some closing agent you don't know, even if you were forced to go there because the listing agent said the seller request He'll only do it if you use this closing agent. You know, let's be realistic. That seller knows no closing agents. He's lived in the house for 50 years, and you're telling me suddenly he needs that closing agent? No. The realtor has a relationship with that closing agent, and very oftentimes in the listing agreement that they get, there's a disclosure that says, we own the title company. That's the point. So what do you do? You have to make a decision. If you're going to close with them, you have to ask that question. Do you do a double closing? First ask them, can I use my end buyer's funds if I decide to do that? Don't tell them I'm an investor and I'm going to do that. Say to them, look guys, I do one of three things. I uh, buy that property, I rehab it, put it back on market, and uh, create new neighborhoods. Or I buy it, fix it up, and I rent it. And sometimes I have too many properties and I just sell them to another investor. If I decide to sell it to another investor, are you willing to allow me to use that end buyer's funds to close with your client? And if he says, starts screaming at you, no, you can't do it, you're not supposed to. Don't get involved in something that's illegal. And I don't care what they say to you. I can find 85% of the title agents that I deal with tell me the story of why it isn't legal, and the other 14% tell me uh, they will sue if they find out somebody doing it, and the 1% that are doing it just don't care. Don't get yourself stuck in a place, in a situation where you're going to really not be able to close because you have to come to a transactional funder at the last minute, and most of them will not do it. I'm there for you. I've been in the business for 45 years, besttransactionalfunding.com. And while I'm on this rant, I'm going to say, I'm doing a number of closings for investors who are selling to iBuyers. And I talked to one of my students today who had three properties that he had under contract with an iBuyer. And I've seen it all over the country. You'll notice when you get their contract on the B to C side, they don't take yours. They send you theirs. And you've got to read it carefully because here's a prime example. An investor came to me and said, I have a transactional closing, I need $250,000. And I said, okay. You know, I called the closing agent, had everything set up. I said, I need the A to B and B to C HUDs. They sent me the A to B. I said, okay, I know how much money to send in, 249000 and change. But I need to see that I'm being paid back. Oh, yeah, not a problem. Send us the money and I'll send you the HUD. I said, no, send me the HUD and I'll send you the money. And literally in the morning of the closing, I finally got the HUD statement and realized, and the investor, who's since become a student, said to me, did you see the HUD? I said, I just got it. He said, instead of my $57,000 profit, $57,000 profit, it looks like I'm only making $2,854 or $44. I looked at the HUD and he's right. And what happened is with these iBuyers, they have a number of fees which they fully disclose in their contract. Now, he paid 7% as the first fee. 
some of the other guys I've talked to have paid as much as 10%. First fee, 10% off of their purchase price. The second one is very simply uh, the rehab cost, construction costs that they estimate do the rehab. You're paying for them. Now, that's an open-ended number. That can be anything they want it to make. Instead of putting in windows, double hung, double pane, they can put in impact windows. Now, they may not put them in, but they can put it on the list. And then they charge them a buyer's agent fee in addition. And holy crow, that could have been 6%. The other thing that's happening with them, which is very important, is when I did the double closing on that same day with that firm, well, that was fine. But what I'm seeing coming back is they now are saying, we can't close the same day. We have to close three days later. Now, what does that set up? And I'm not saying this happens, but here's what it sets up. Three days later, because their contract that they sent you and you signed says they can cancel up to the day of closing, what do they do? They cancel. What do you do? Well, if you've got the money and you can hold the property, it doesn't matter. But in most cases, you run out there and you find a transactional funder, and he says, I'll fund it but it's so much more than a normal transactional funding because I take the risk that your end buyer doesn't close. Now, they know you're probably not going to be able to get transactional funding and you're probably not going to be able to close. So what have they done? They found out who your seller is and they found out what you paid. So when you don't close, it's very simple for them to send the homeowner, the seller, a letter that says, by the way, we were involved in a transaction where we were buying your property through this investor who was making this gigantic profit. We want to come directly to you. That's what we do. For convenience sake, we buy directly from the seller. And you see them say that all over TV and writing and so on and so forth. Now, what have they done? Black Hat wholesaled the deal. They went around the investor by doing that three-day stall tactic. So they're doing a lot of deals and they're leaving a wake of stuff behind them. And I just did a, a seminar on it in a club that I'm involved in. And I showed how the ones that are public are disclosing how much money they're making. And they're not. They're losing a lot of money, hundreds of millions of dollars. So when does it stop when they lose enough money and the public realizes this may not be as good as it sounded? Heads up, beware of what's happening. Take a look at my website, Best Transactional Funding, and look for the menu tab. I haven't put it up yet, but it'll probably say uh, Preferred Closing Agents, and I'll update it from time to time. Because it's important that if you're going to deal with a closing agent, whether you use transactional funding or not, he needs or she needs to get you through the process and understand what you're doing. So I wish you limitless success in all that you do. I'm Dave Dinkle.